Hey Tag here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. If you just got your MetaQuest 3S or your MetaQuest 3 and you wonder why everything look kind of blurry, well, we can fix it. Yeah, yeah, you can adjust your IPD, clean the lenses, wear that thing in the right way. By the way, you should totally do those things. But what about just brutally increasing the resolution? That sounds awesome. The reality is that these headsets are much more powerful than it seems, and many developers in Meta itself tend to keep the resolution lower than their capability abilities to actually avoid like battery draining or you know just a fan spinning like a jet engine. I don't care. I'm here for the best experience and just a keyboard away from keep playing anyway. So in this video we're gonna see how to increase your graphics on your Quest headsets to make your games look from this to this, like a remaster without having to buy the games again. We're gonna have two different methods. One is gonna be completely free, but we're gonna need the PC for it. And we're gonna have some limitation. The second, not free, but we can even do everything right on our quests. We profiles for pretty much every single game in your library. A better library, new recording settings. It's so good that weirdly enough, even Meta recommends it. So well, let's improve our headsets, shall we? Let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna leave the timestamps right below so uh, you can jump into different parts of the video if you're interested in something or something else. Let's start, shall we? All right, so for the first method, we're gonna use side quests. This is something you should have and install anyway because that is gonna bring you so many new games and possibilities and mods to the MetaQuest platform. Things that are not directly available on the store. We're talking about Tomb Raider, Doom 3, even Minecraft with all amazing full VR ports. It's like the best quest companion by the way. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna use it to enhance graphics, but yeah, use it. It's just awesome. About SideQuest, I actually made a guide a while back on the channel on how to install everything in two minutes. And instead of just sending you there, I'm gonna introduce you to a younger T. They still live in Boston and might have older menus, but yeah, everything is exactly the same. So me, Take it away. Hey, Tag here, let's get into it. The first thing that we have to do is to create a new organization for Oculus. We have uh, just to let them think that we are a developer. So uh, we're gonna go to the link that is gonna be in the description below, by the way, and just create a new organization. Put the name that you want, be creative, and let's get right away to the step number two that is to install the ADB driver. So for that, we have to connect, of course, the Oculus Quest 2 to our PC and following another link in the description below, we're gonna download the drivers and see them and then install the Android Win USB driver with a right click and clicking on install over there. And well, you're done. For the next step, we're gonna need our phone and the Oculus application, of course. Over there, we're gonna go on settings and with the Oculus Quest 2 connected, we're gonna click on it, go on more settings, click on developer mode and activate it with the toggle. And it sounds crazy, but we are pretty much ready in the next quest. I'm sorry, step is to install SideQuest. Of course, the link is gonna be again in the description below. And once it's installed, we're gonna have to connect the Oculus Quest 2 to the PC, of course, to start to download and install all these new applications. If SideQuest doesn't recognize your Oculus Quest 2, of course, just put it on and you're gonna find probably a pop-up over there to allow, of course, the connection with the PC. You click on allow and bam, we are done. And Thanks, Steve. With all those steps done and the new version available that just looks better, by the way, we can now click on device settings and tools and there we're gonna find everything we need. Here we can set the CPU and the GPU level to kind of overclock our quest. By the way, many games already use level four, so it's not that important as it seems and it will use more battery when it's not needed. Regardless, let's go for it for now. Default texture side, this is the important one as it will up the resolution of the in-game textures, increasing the rendering. You can bring it down to have more battery life and the blurrier mess if you like to, or you can increase it even over the resolution of the panel to have some sweet super sampling. Bear in mind though that not all games are gonna be able to run smoothly with the max settings, and these settings are gonna apply on every single game on a quest until you restart it. So be cautious with that because frame drops in VR are the bigger reason for actual motion sickness. 
potion sickness. Next is a refresh rate. Here we can force it to go higher to 120 or even lower to 60 Hz. I do recommend 90 as is the sweet spot for VR, but again, not all games are gonna be able to make it. Again, it's better lower refresh rate, but stable than higher and unstable. Just avoid 60 though, right? Next is FFR or fixed for other rendering. This is actually changing the resolution of portions of the display where you're usually not looking at, saving of course performance to counter the higher resolution on the center. The reality is that with the 3S and the old Fresnel lenses, you're gonna barely notice the drop in resolution around the edges. So don't be scared to actually abusing of it. And with these settings, well, your games are gonna start to look just miles better than before. Again, like using a remastered of the same game. In some cases, the difference is just incredible. What's the limitation with this though? Well, as we said, this is gonna apply to every single game or the experience on your Quest platform. So you'll find yourself having to actually lower the settings down for more demanding games or the bringing it up for games that need it. On top of that, everything is just temporary, like a uh, younger wood. And everything will go back to the default settings every time that you restart your headset. Luckily though, you can sideload the SideQuest app on your headset to make this process a bit faster. And to fix all of that, well, there is an app that I personally use since the MetaQuest two times that costs $12. I know. This will create optimized profiles for pretty much every game on your library and you can even create your own, saving you time and giving you full control of the hardware that you bought. I mean, even Meta directly is starting to recommend it to people. This is the Quest Game Optimizer. It will require a bit of tinkering to make it work, but... It's well worth it. By the way, this is not sponsored or anything. There's no affiliate, like nothing. I don't get any penny for it. It's just an app that I use since the very beginning. And it's kind of vital for me also to record these videos because I have many different options for that directly in there and make games look just better and uh, more enjoyable to use. We all know the standalone sucks a bit, but it doesn't have to. But let's install it, shall we? The app is going to be on niche.co. For that, you're gonna have to create a profile over there, then you can buy the app. And because I find the website a bit confusing, I usually go on the profile picture, click on library and download it from there. Always get the latest version, of course, that comes also with the support for the 3S right now and the new translucent panel, like the Vision Pro. You want to feel fancy. You can do this both on the Quest browser or of course on your PC. Now that you downloaded a file, if you're on PC, and now you have SideQuest, we can install it from there directly. We click on Install APK, select our file, and then we're gonna find the app directly in unknown sources in the library. Ready. If instead we download it on Quest, well, it's a bit more complicated as Meta doesn't let us install apps from the browser directly. But there's a workaround, don't worry. So we're gonna have to go to the store and look for Mobile VR Station from App Lab. Once installed, we launch it. And once in there, we can go in Configuration Wizard at the bottom. Show all options, configure scope storage, and then step one, request access. A new window will pop up, and if you use an Android phone, it will look very familiar indeed. Here we click on the first part of the link, we look for the download folder, and you've downloaded the app in the browser, you're gonna find the APK over here. We click on the top right, and it will make us install the app. Almost there. Now we can get in the app in unknown sources as well, but we are not done just yet. With the first time using it, we have to enter the email of the account we used to buy the app. After the verification, we're gonna be right in. Unfortunately, you might see a big red banner on top as we have to enable ADB on the device. Again, if you have a PC, you can go directly on SideQuest and with a cable plugged in, click on the enable wireless mode. Click on connect, accept the debugging in the headset and you will be ready. If instead you download it on the headset, well, we're gonna have to enable ADB in a different way. We can click on the banner and click on open settings on the solution two part, you will open the Android settings like a phone and be sure to have both the new windows and the optimizer open at the same time. So let's scroll down to about headset and then down to build number. Let's mesh that button until it enables developer options, 
And congrats, you are a developer again. Now let's go back and go on system and now we will find the developer options. Here we can look for wireless debugging. We can use the toggle on the right and we're gonna get a prompt where we can click on always allow on this network so we don't have to do it every single time. Once enabled, we can click on the text of wireless debugging and click on pair device with pairing codes. That's the code we need for the optimizer. Insert it and voila, we're actually done. If ADB on the top right is actually green now, Optimizer is working with its full potential. So let me show it to you. All right, here we are on the Quest Games Optimizer. Let's put it closer to me. Here we go, like a big tablet. And as you can see, this is gonna work like a new library where we can scroll for all the applications that we have installed over here. What's particular so? Well, every single application is gonna have a different profile if available where we have higher resolution already in an optimized way. If you don't like that, by the way, you can click on the top right and select the battery one. Well, of course, save battery HD to have not too much super sampling and HD plus, that is always my favorite. If you don't like that and you wanna exaggerate as well, we have the edit button with all the different settings that we can use over here. We can change the render resolution and have four different profiles for you. We can change the earth to a very specific number, the CPU on the GPU power, and of course the FFR, so the fixed for better rendering. If you want something like uh, to work pretty well, we go ultra, ultra, very high, and uh, we can test it in game, or we can start it directly or send it to the developer so it can test it and see if it's a good way to actually use it. Usually I use HD+, to have a higher resolution on the dashboard so everything will look better when I actually use it. And trust me when I tell you that the difference is really, really perceivable as all the environments as well get super sampled and everything looks just miles better. Even the dashboard itself doesn't have those jagged edges anymore. Of course, it's in games that you can see the real difference. Clicking on Demio, for example, we're gonna get the prompt with the resolution we're using, the earths that we're using and our profile, and then you're gonna start to notice the actual difference while playing with a much higher resolution than before. If you look at this, for example, I can actually read no problems at all. Everything is still super smooth, but everything is running in a much higher resolution than what we had. Let's quit the game. The cool thing is that we don't have to use this library if we don't want to. We can still use the regular library that is not my favorite anyway, but from here, it's gonna start with a new profile anyway, because we actually gave him the opportunity in the settings, uh, where is it, to actually start with the optimization for every single app. Here there are a lot of different options that you can change by the way, even create a shortcut to actually replace one of these ones over here, but we can actually just move it over there if we want to, uh, to make it easier to find. There's also the OVR metric tools. So when you create like a new profiles, so you're gonna have that way over here to see the FPS in the games and also have like this new option for the transparent optimizer. Here we go, like a frosty glass. There are like tons of different things, like also the recording. You can actually record in 3D if you want or change the way of recording. For example, now it's in 1440p, so you can actually read what I'm doing. Uh, we can choose the compression and also the frame rate of the recording directly and the eye that is recording in this moment. But yeah, it seems like an easy little app, but it really changes completely the way you're using these devices. That much so that again, games looks like miles better than what they were intended to look. And uh, the crazy thing is that these headsets are completely capable of doing it. The Quest 2, a bit less than the other two, uh, but the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S, like they just nail it. Yeah, of course, battery life is gonna be a bit less, but if you use a strap with a battery, it's not really a problem, or you can just attach it to the cable and keep playing. And the fact that this works on every single game on the store is just really astonishing. I mean, the results really speaks for themselves. I mean, I'm using this app from years and nothing ever happened, but hey, of course, as always, uh, use it at your own risk. But anyway, guys, yeah, this is a way to actually up the resolution and the graphics of your Quest 
headsets without much of a fuzz, I guess. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If the guide was useful, remember to leave a like. And as always, if you like the video, like. If you didn't like the video, please like. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, the join button on there. Turn further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons. Join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.